Okay, today we're going to be solving absolute value equations. And uh, if you have your notebook, we should go ahead and put this in there. The idea is we want to be able to solve equations that have an absolute value of x in them. And so let's remember that absolute value asks for the distance away from zero. So for instance, the absolute value of five is five, and the absolute value of negative seven is also positive seven because they're both that distance away from zero. Everything becomes positive. So let's get into an equation that involves absolute value of x. Absolute value of x equals 9. And we want to find what x makes this true. When we're solving an equation, our answer should be x equals something. What is the x equal to that makes this true? And just thinking about it for a second, since we know that absolute value makes whatever number is inside of it positive, we should see right away that x could be 9 because the absolute value of 9 is still equal to 9. Or x could equal negative 9, because the absolute value of negative 9 is also equal to 9. So this is one way to write our answer. x is equal to 9, or x is equal to negative 9. We can also write x is equal to 9 or negative 9. That's another way to write it, just as a single x equals. And we can also write x equals uh, negative 9 comma 9 in braces. Um, so if we write it as a set, that's fine. And one last way we could write our answer is x equals plus or minus 9. Um, this positive or negative sign is pretty useful, uh, sometimes in absolute value. So that's what's going on so far. Let's see um, a slightly harder one. Um, and hopefully that all goes away. Nope, okay, let's erase some stuff. I'm using this new program, and I'm not 100% sure of it. And uh, so we'll see how it goes for me. Um, <clears throat> what about this one? What if the absolute value of x is equal to negative 3? Well, now what could x be? Again, the absolute value is going to turn whatever's inside of it positive. So how is it going to end up being a negative? The answer is that there are no solutions here. And the, the reason is, is because absolute value will always come out positive. How could it ever produce a negative? If we ever had the absolute value is equal to a negative, the answer will be that there are no solutions. So let's see how you guys can do on this on your own. Um, we're going to try these ones right here. So try them on your own. Uh, if you're getting them right, you'll skip over quite a bit of this video. Uh, and if you're doing the play pause it, and if you're getting it wrong, well, you can see the explanations. All right, let's see how this goes. The absolute value of x is equal to 8. So we should see that x could equal 8 or x could equal negative 8, because either way, the absolute value of each of those numbers comes out to be 8. Absolute value of 8 is 8. Absolute value of negative 8 is 8. The second one. Similarly, um, we could say n is equal to um, positive or negative 348, because if m is positive 348, uh, if m is positive 348, uh, absolute value of 348 is 348. And if n is negative 348, the absolute value of negative 348 is also equal to 348. All right, next one. Um, the absolute value of b is equal to 82.2. So b could equal negative 82.12 or positive 82.12. Either way, the absolute value will turn it positive. Hopefully we're feeling okay about this so far. The next one. Absolute value of x is equal to 5. And no, it could not be x is 5 or x is negative 5. That is not correct. Um, because the absolute value will turn both of these positive. Absolute value of 5 equals positive 5. Absolute value of negative 5 equals positive 5. And there is no value that we can do absolute value of that will come out to be a negative. And so this one is no solutions. Um, there is another way to write no solutions. Um, it's fine to write a set with a zero with a line slash through it. This is um, this is the symbol for the empty set, and it's another way of writing that there are no solutions. You're writing the set of solutions, and there are none. Um, okay. Similarly, we should be able to do this next guy. I don't know how to make this. Oh, there it is. Delete. Um, this next guy, absolute value of A is equal to negative 3.6. And again, there are no solutions because no matter what A is, when you do the absolute value, it will come out positive, and how could it ever come out to be negative? Um, how could it ever come out to be negative 3.6?
So when you do the absolute value is equal to a negative number, that will always be no solutions. All right, let's go back to our notes for just a second. You know, we noticed a lot of times this came out to like n equals plus or minus 348, positive or negative 82.2, positive or negative 8. And, you know, we might wonder, is it always going to be like that? And the answer is definitely not. <laughs> that is not how it's always going to be. So we're going to go back to our notes and we're going to do one more um, slightly different one. Let's do the absolute value of 2x plus 3 is equal to um, 7. And remember when we did absolute value of x equals 7, the thing on the inside is going to get turned positive. And so x could equal 7 or x could equal negative 7. Well, notice what we have over here. We have absolute value of 2x plus 3 could equal 7. The answer to 2x plus 3, we're going to get the answer to it. Then that answer will be turned positive. And so 2x plus 3 could equal 7, because if you do 2x plus 3 and it equals 7, the absolute value of 7 will be 7. Or 2x plus 3 could equal negative 7. Okay? And this is two separate equations that we're going to need to solve. Right? We've got equation number 1 and equation number 2, and they will give us two different answers. So let's go ahead and solve them. It's pretty easy linear stuff. We are going to subtract 3 from both sides. And what's left over is 2x equals 4. So we're going to divide by 2 to cancel out the multiplying by 2. And, oops, tried to change colors there. I didn't do a good job. x equals 2. So one of the answers is that x could equal 2. The other equation we also need to solve. Remember that 2x plus 3, I just noticed that, uh, let's go back to this one for just a second. If x is 2, then 2 times 2 plus 3 gives us 7. And when we do the absolute value of 7, we'll get 7. Okay. Um, what about, let's see, can we do that? Get rid of that stuff. I play around with this. Um, what about this next one? Well, we have 2x plus 3 equals negative 7. So we're going to solve equation 2. We're going to subtract 3 on both sides, and it's going to come out a little bit different. We still get 2, oh, sorry, switched colors and didn't do a good job of it. 2x equals, now, negative 7 minus 3. If we go down by 7 and down 3 more, that's down by 10. And so x could equal negative 5. You can divide by 2 here, or you just think 2 times what gives you negative 10. 2 times negative 5 gives you negative 10. Um, so notice that if x is negative 5, 2 times negative 5 plus 3. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. And if we do the absolute value of negative 7, it will come out to be 7. So the two solutions are x is 2 and x is negative 5. Either way, the absolute value comes out to be positive 7. So our big idea here, let me go ahead and erase all of this. Our big idea here is that just like absolute value, and by its, I mean, <laughs> maybe the best thing is just to erase everything here. Wah, wah. There's probably a better way to do this. Um, just like absolute value split up into x could be 7 or negative 7, if you have absolute value of something else, like 2x plus 3 equals 7, then the thing inside, could equal 7, or the thing inside could equal negative 7, and we get two equations to solve. So let's see how you do on this on your own. Uh, let's go over to here. And this is the big idea. This is the hardest thing about today. So if you get this, you're in great shape. Why don't you try each of these? If you get them right, you're not going to need to watch an explanation. But if you get them wrong, you can go ahead and watch how it worked. Okay. Hopefully we notice that for this first one, the thing inside the absolute value is going to get turned positive. So either the thing inside, x plus 7, could equal 15, or the thing inside, x plus 7, could equal negative 15. If this comes out to be 15, absolute value of 15 will be 15. If this comes out to be negative 15, 
If it comes out to be negative 15, absolute value of negative 15 will also equal 15. And now we're just solving each one of these equations. So we're going to subtract 7. And it's actually going to be the same steps for both, the, both of the equations. Um, x, oh, let me do the blue. x equals 15 minus 7 is 8. Here, negative 15 minus 7 is negative 22. We went down by 15, down by 7 more, that's down by 22. And so we have two different answers. x could be 8, x could be negative 22. If x is 8, 8 plus 7 is 15, and the absolute value will still be 15. If x is negative 22, negative 22 plus 7 is negative 15, and the absolute value will turn it to positive 15. Okay, let's see how we do on this second one. Try it on your own. And if you struggled, hopefully you noticed that the thing inside of the absolute value, 2a plus 3, could be equal to 5, because then the absolute value would still be 5. Or that thing inside the absolute value, the 2a plus 3, could be equal to negative 5, because if we do the absolute value of negative 5, that will give us 5. And so we want to solve these. We're going to subtract 3. We're going to do that on both equations. We can do it at the same time. We might as well. And then we're going to get 2a equals um, 2. Here we'll get 2a equals negative 5 minus 3. We do go down 5, go down 3 more. That's negative 8. And on both, we're going to divide by 2. So we're sol I'm solving two different equations at once. If you want to do one at a time, that's fine. So here, a is equal to 1. And here, a is equal to negative 4. Those are my two answers. a could be negative 4 or Either way, Ugh, those are some ugly braces. So that's what's going on there. If a is 1, we'll get 5. If a is negative 4, we'll get negative 5. But when we do the absolute value, both come out to be positive 5. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and delete this. Let's try this next one. Let's see how you guys do. And this time, interestingly enough, the thing on the inside could only be one value. x plus 4 can only be 0. Because um, when you do the absolute value of 0, you'll get 0. And that's the only number that if you do the absolute value, you'll get 0 at. So we subtract 4, and x could only be negative 4. That's it. Negative 4 is the only number that will make this 0. Um, because the thing inside of the absolute value has to equal 0. That's the only way you can do the absolute value of it to get 0. Okay. Over here, we should not be saying 2m plus 5 equals 17 and 2m plus 5 equals negative 17. That is not correct. What we want to notice is that the absolute value will always turn whatever's inside of it positive. So this thing is going to get turned positive, and it will never equal negative 17. And so there are no solutions. When the absolute value is equal to a negative, there's not a lot of math to be done. There's just no solutions. All right, let's go to this guy. Um, Try it on your own. Let's see how we do. And hopefully we see that the inside has to be equal to 8. Or the inside has to be equal to negative 8. So we can solve these equations. We're going to subtract 3. We're going to subtract 3 over here too. You can do them both at once. You can do them one at a time. It doesn't really matter. 1 half m equals 5. 1 half m equals negative 11. And let's remember that to get rid of a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. So we'll just multiply by 2. That should make sense, right? Um, undoing taking half of something is doubling it. So we're going to multiply by 2. And so we get m equals 10. It should make sense, right? Half of m is half of 10 is 5. Over here, we'll get m equals negative 22. Half of negative 22 is negative 11. And those are our two answers. m is 10 or m is negative 11. Okay. Last one for this set, and hopefully you're feeling pretty good about this. I'm trying to erase all these things. It's uh, mostly erased. Okay, let's just erase this. All right, last one. Hopefully you can do it by yourself, and hopefully we recognize right away that the absolute value is supposed to equal a negative, but absolute value is going to always come out positive. And so there's no way for the absolute value to equal negative 12, and so there are no solutions. 
Um, we can also write that as the empty set, the set of nothing. And that are those the possible solutions. So that's it. All right, let's go back to our notes and let's codify something. Let's put down something in writing, which is um, when we are solving absolute value equations, when we're solving absolute value equations and we have something like this, I don't know, 11, it's fine. This looks a little bit more complicated and we're going to have some steps. So let's, let's put this off to the side. We're going to put some steps. When we're solving absolute values, one, we need to first start by isolating the absolute value. Isolate means to get alone or get by itself. And so we want to get this absolute value part by itself. And we're going to do our inverse operations just like if we were solving equations. So we're going to um, add one to cancel out the, the subtracting one. And let's see what we have left over here. We've got two absolute value of x plus three equals 12. Now, the absolute value is still not by itself. We've got this 2 multiplying times it, right? And so to undo multiplying, we're going to divide by 2. Multiplying and dividing cancel out. And so we get absolute value of x plus 3 equals 6. We have isolated the absolute value. It is now by itself. Once we've got the absolute value by itself, our second step is going to be to see what the inside could equal. Um, and in general, if it's equal to a positive, if the absolute value is equal to a positive number, we'll be able to split it up into two different things. X plus three could equal six because the absolute value will turn six into positive six. Or X plus three could equal negative six because the absolute value of negative six is six. If instead the absolute value is equal to zero, there's only one option, which is that this thing is equal to zero. If the absolute value is equal to a negative, there are always going to be no solutions. So there's kind of three options. Option one is that if the absolute value is equal to a positive, the inside could be positive or negative because the absolute value will turn it positive. If the absolute value is equal to zero, then the only thing the inside could be is zero. Or if the absolute value is equal to a negative, we're done and there's no solutions. So let's go ahead and solve these. Um, step three is going to be solve the leftover equation, the resulting equation. I guess they're going to be equations usually. And let's go ahead and do that here. Um, we are going to subtract three on both sides. We'll do that on both of these at the same time. We're going to go ahead and solve both at once. I find it a little easier. X equals... Okay, 6 minus 3 is 3. Negative 6 minus 3 is negative 9. And so those are the two answers. X could be 3 or X could be negative 9. Okay, well, hopefully we feel good about this. But if not, you'll get another chance to try this um, with me in a second. So these ones have slightly more steps. Why don't you try some of these on your own and see how you do. And if you need help, you'll get, get to watch a video explanation. And if you don't, you'll skip the video explanation, hopefully. All right. This first one, we want to start. Step one was isolate the absolute value. We want to get the absolute value alone. So what we're trying to go, do is get this absolute value part by itself. And to do that, we're going to subtract one on both sides. So two absolute value of x is equal to 24. Next, the absolute value is getting multiplied by two. So we're going to divide by two. Absolute value of x is equal to 12. Okay. So we've got the absolute value by itself. Now, what could the inside be equal to? X could equal 12 or X could equal negative 12 because either way, the absolute value will turn it to positive 12. And that's my answers. I'm already done. X could be 12 or negative 12. Next one. Let's see if you can do this yourself. Um, and if you had trouble, again, we do want to get the absolute value um, by itself. So we want to get this part alone. And so we're going to start by uh, trying to get rid of everything else that's there. We're going to subtract 12. 
and um, we've got absolute value of 2y plus 4 could equal negative 10. And now we've got the absolute value by, by, value by itself. And so the next step is to see what could the inside be equal to. And notice that the absolute value is supposed to equal a negative. Absolute value will always turn positive. And since it's supposed to equal a negative here, there are no solutions. Okay. Let's look at this next one. Um, we want to try to solve it and see how you do. And hopefully you noticed you should get the absolute value part by itself first. And so we're going to go ahead and add one to both sides. And we get negative three absolute value of a equals negative 12. We're going to divide by negative three to get the absolute value by itself. And so now we've got absolute value of a equals four. And so the inside, what could the inside be? Well, a could equal four or a could equal negative four because either way, the absolute value will turn it positive. So we get two answers. And I just want to go back and highlight. Oh, man. Hold on. Oh, no, I just did something. <laughs> um, I want to highlight that it's really hard to tell at the very beginning what's happening. Um, <laughs> erase this. Uh, you'll notice that in number two, it started out equal to a positive. But when we got the absolute value by itself, it was equal to a negative. Here it started out as a negative, but by the time we got the absolute value by itself, it was equal to a positive. And um, this one had no solutions. This one had two solutions, four and negative four. But you can't tell just by looking at if it's positive or negative at the beginning. You have to get the absolute value by itself before you can tell if there will be solutions or not. So I just want to make that quick point. All right, try this next one on your own, see how you do. And hopefully we see we want to get the absolute value by itself. And so we have to add one first. And we get 12 equals 4, absolute value of 1 half b plus 1. We need to divide by 4 because it's multiplying by 4, so we divide by 4. And we get 3 equals absolute value of 1 half b plus 1. Okay, next step, we've got the absolute value by itself. So now we need to see what could the inside of the absolute value be equal to? Well, 1 half b plus 1 could equal 3, or 1 half b plus 1 could equal negative 3, because the absolute value will turn it to positive 3 either way. And so we have to solve this. Um, let's go ahead and subtract 1 on both sides from both of these. We'll just solve both at the same time. 1 half b equals 2. 1 half b equals uh, negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. And to get rid of a fraction, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Multiplying by 2 cancels out with taking half of something. 2 halves is a whole. b is equal to 4 or b is equal to negative 8. Those are our two answers. So when we've got a fraction, we need to multiply by the reciprocal. Oh, wow, I don't know what I just typed there. I don't know how to get rid of that guy either. Oh, man. There's this, like, giant ruler on my screen, and I don't know how to get rid of it. What do I do with this? Can I throw it away? Yeah, okay, that's good enough. Okay, let's see how you guys do on this one. We're almost done. We're kind of at, like, the hardest ones um, that aren't bonus problems on our test right here. Um, so we need to start by getting the absolute value by itself. So we're going to divide by 2. 4 equals absolute value of 3x minus 5. We've gotten the absolute value by itself, and now we can see uh, what the inside needs to equal to. 3x minus 5 could equal 4, because absolute value of 4 is 4, or 3x minus 5 could equal negative 4. We're going to solve both of these. Add 5. Add 5 is also how we solve this one. Um, and so in both cases, we get 3x by itself, but here we get 9, and here we get... Uh, negative 4 plus 5 is equal to 1. So when we divide by 3, x is equal to 3. Or when we divide by 3 here, x is equal to 1 third. And we're fine with that. x could be 3 or 1 third. Those are the two answers. 
that's the best way to leave the solution. Okay, next one. Almost done with this lesson. Fantastic. All right, we need to get the absolute value by itself. So subtract five. Guys, you can do two steps at once if you want. You subtract five, you get 12. We know we're going to divide by three next because it's multiplying by three. We get four. Um, so we get uh, absolute. So, so you can cancel out both things at once if you want. I added the, or I subtracted the five, then I divided by three. You can do two steps at once. It's fine. I don't care. Um, we've got the absolute value by itself. So now 5n minus 2 could equal 4, or the 5n minus 2 could equal negative 4. Um, again, we're just going to get the n by itself. So 5n, we're going to add 2 to both sides, equals 6. So n equals 6 fifths. I'm running out of room here. n could be 6 fifths here when we add 2. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. And when we divide, n is negative 2 fifths. That's it. That's all we got. Let's go ahead and delete that. And our last normal problem here, our last one. We need to start by getting the absolute value by itself. And I just want to point out, we're not adding 10 here. This is a positive 10, so we subtract 10. The negative goes with the 4. So that's negative 8 equals negative 4 times 5x minus 2. So we can't add 10. That would not cancel out that. Uh, and now we need to divide by negative 4. And we get 2 equals um, absolute value of 5x minus 2. Um, let's see. So the inside, 5x minus 2, could equal 2 or 5x minus 2 could equal negative 2. Um, here when we add 2, 5x equals 4, x equals 4 fifths. Here uh, when we add 2, we get 5x equals 0. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And so 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 0 gives you 0. Or you could divide by 5. 0 divided by 5 also gives you 0. So 4 fifths or 0. And that's it, guys. That's it for those. Um, now we've got something a little harder. Let's see. And this will usually be a bonus problem. This is, um, you know, definitely kind of tr tricky. But the idea is the same. There's just one additional piece of algebra. For this first one, we already have the absolute value by itself. So we're going to do this as an example together, and then I'll let you guys do the next. Uh, I'll, I'll, let's, do, let's do this one together, and then I'll let you do this first one on your own. Okay. We already have the absolute value by itself. So the inside could equal 54, or the inside could equal negative 54. We've got two different equations here. And what makes this different is we have a quadratic equation. There's an x squared. There's also an x with it. So we can't just get x by itself. When there's an x squared and an x, we should remember from algebra 1 that we always make uh, one side equal to 0. We want x squared. Um, to be with the x and the number and equal to 0. So we're going to subtract 54 here. And when we subtract 54 on both sides, there are no like terms. And we get x squared minus 15x minus 54 equals 0. And our idea, of course, is that we're going to factor this. So this is going to be a binomial times a binomial. And the first two have to multiply to make x squared. So x times x is x squared. And then we need to find two numbers that multiply to make negative 54, but add to be negative 15. So um, I'm just thinking about like how to multiply to make 54. 54 could be like 2 times 27, but that can't give me 15. I'm going through all the different ways to get 54. 3 times... 3 times 18 is 54. That might be able to give me 15. Let's see. If we do a positive uh, and a negative, a positive times a negative will give me negative 54. So I could do negative 18 and positive 3. Negative 18 and positive 3 will multiply to make negative 54, but add to be negative 15. And guys, we did have a homework on multiplying binomials. Let's just see why this works real quick. 
Um, when you multiply this out, x times x gives you x squared. x times negative 18 gives you negative 18x. 3 times x gives you 3x. And 3 times negative 18 gives you negative 54. And so these two end up adding to be negative 15x's. And uh, when you simplify, we, we get the thing we wanted. So these add to be the right number of x's, and they multiply to make negative 54. The reason we want to do this is because now we can see what x could be. If we have two things multiplying to make 0, each of these factors could be 0. 0 times anything gives 0. And that's what factoring does. Is it's rewriting it as a multiplication. And so the x I need to make x plus 3 equals 0 is x could be negative 3. Or x could be positive 18 because 18 minus 18 is 0. So these are two of the answers. X could be negative 3 or 18. But we've only solved one of the two halves of the equation. Um, and so we still need to go solve this other one. Uh, remember, our first step is to make it equal to 0. And I hope you guys remember this from Algebra 1. So x squared minus 15x plus 54 this time equals 0. And again, we're factoring have two things multiplying to make zero. And we need them to add to be what number? And multiply to be what number? It needs to add to be 15 and multiply to make 54. And so I already had started writing out different ways to do it. But this time, um, it, it can't be 18 and 3 because it has to be a negative and a negative to multiply to make positive 54. And negative 3 and negative 18 would add to be negative 21, not negative 15. So I need to keep going. Um, 4 can't multiply to make 54, 5 can't multiply to make 54, so I already did 2 times 27, 3 times 18, 4 and 5 don't work, 6 times 9 is 54, and 6 plus 9 could also make 15, right? Um, now it needs to add to be negative 15, so x times x will be x squared, and it's going to have to be minus 6 and minus 9 that gives me... Um, positive 54, because negative times a negative gives me positive 54, and negative 6 plus negative 9 is negative 15. So we get, um, we get this is equal to 0, and so what does x need to be? Well, x needs to be 6, or x needs to be 9. And so there were four different possible solutions here. x could be negative 3, positive 6, positive 9, or positive 18. And so <laughs> that's what happens if we do a absolute value inside of a uh, an absolute value inside of a, a sorry a square a quadratic inside of an absolute value? Sorry guys, I'm trying to delete this. So let's see how you do on this on your own. See if you can walk through that process on your own. What could x be for this absolute value? And if you have trouble, we'll go over it. But hopefully you recognize right away that the absolute value is already by itself, and so we can split it into two equations. x squared plus 5x could equal 6, or x squared plus 5x could be negative 6. And um, we need to solve, and our first step is to make it equal to 0. We want it to be equal to 0, so we're going to subtract 6 to make that happen. x squared plus 5x minus 6 is equal to 0. We're factoring to see what multiplies to make 0. x times x is x squared. We need two numbers that multiply to make negative 6, but add to be 5. So the ways to multiply to make 6 are 6 times 1 or 3 times 2. And these both can kind of make 5, right? 6 minus 1 is 5. 3 plus 2 is 5. And let's see. It has to multiply to make a negative. So it's going to be a negative times a positive. And if I do a negative and a positive here, it'll add up to be 1. But if I do a negative and a positive here, it'll add up to be negative 5. Now, I, I do need um, the bigger one to be positive. So it's going to be positive 6 and negative 1. That way, 6 minus 1 comes out to be 5 like we want it. So it's going to be positive 6 and negative 1. Uh, 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. 6 plus negative 1 is 5. And so the x could equal 1 or the x could equal negative 6. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. And either way, it will multiply to make 0. That was just one of the two equations. I also need to solve this other one. I need to make it equal to 0. And we're going to do that by adding 6 this time. 
So we get x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. And again, we want to factor. x times x is x squared. And we need two numbers that multiply to make 6 that add to be 5. Uh, and this time it's going to be 3 and 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 plus 2 is 5. x could equal negative 3. x could equal negative 2. And so we have four answers. Um, all right, there's one more over here for you guys to try. And guys, this is just the same kind of thing. The only difference is that we don't have the absolute value by itself yet. There's this one half here. We need to cancel it out by multiplying by the reciprocal. So multiply by 2. And so we'll get absolute value of uh, x squared minus 10x equals 24. We do 2 times 1 half to cancel it out. And it's the same as before. It's the same as all those other ones where we're going to split it up into two different quadratics. And we're going to make it equal to 0. So x squared minus 10x minus 24 equals 0. We're going to factor x times x is x squared. We need two numbers that multiply. Uh, I was hoping to switch colors there. Multiply to make 24, but add to be negative 10. And looking at it, it's going to be negative 12 and positive 2. These multiply to make negative 24, and they add to be negative 10. And so x could equal negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. x could equal 12. Um, we end up getting the same thing over here where we add the 24. I'm just going to do it very quickly because I'm tired. And uh, we get x. Let's see, it's going to be minus 6 and minus 4. Negative times a negative gives you positive 24. These multiply to make positive 24, but they add to be negative 10. And so x could be 6 or x could be 4. Those are our possible answers. 4, 6, 12, or negative 2. Um, and that's it, guys. So that's solving absolute value equations. Again, the big idea is we get the absolute value by itself. Then we see what the inside could be. If the inside, if the absolute value is equal to a positive number, then we split it up. There's two different possibilities. If the absolute value is equal to a negative number, well, the absolute value can't equal a negative, so it's no solutions. And if the absolute value is equal to zero, there'll only be one possible solution. So that's it. Hopefully you guys are able to do your homework tight and you'll get some good practice and feel great about it. That is all for this.